I'm going to teach you how to calculate the distance between two points and show you how to code it as well. You'll learn to do it in 1D, 2D, 3D, and even in higher dimensional spaces. Because even if our world is 3D, in computer science we use higher dimensions all the time. I'll give examples from things we built on this channel. Some of these may surprise you, and I hope they will, and you'll see these concepts are not really that hard, and you'll start juggling them in no time. Now, let's begin with the one-dimensional case. Here, a point represents a position along an axis. It can be positive, if on the right side of the origin, or negative, if on the left. Now, the length of this segment here, we just use the absolute value, because there's no such thing as a negative distance. So, we already know how to get the distance if one of the points is at the origin, but what if it's not? In that case, we just subtract one from another. The order we do it in doesn't even matter if we remember to use the absolute value. This works when they're positive, negative, or of opposite signs. If we name these points P and Q, we can write a general formula for this positive difference, like so. Now, before we move on to 2D, notice one thing. Moving the axes like this doesn't affect the distance. It's natural, we do it all the time when using a ruler. We place it so that one point is at the origin, and just read the value here. Otherwise, we'd need to do more work. All right, let's add a second dimension. To visualize 2D points, we need another axis. Now we can move the points along this new dimension. And notice that when doing that, this doesn't change. That's because the axes are perpendicular. If they wouldn't be, moving points along one axis would disturb the other. So a 90 degree angle here is important. It makes dimensions independent from each other. Now, everything we learned before applies on this second axis as well. We can easily get this vertical difference using the same formula, and moving the axes like this doesn't change the results. We'll use these two side lengths to calculate the 2D distance. And the way we do that really depends on the application. Sometimes we simply just add the values. Look at this rectangle here. Those segments appear here as well, and if you're traveling by car, you can start going north, then make a right turn and continue due east until the end. You'll be covering this distance. It goes by different names, like the city block, taxi cab, or Manhattan distance. Because Manhattan is like a grid and streets have numbers, so taxi drivers could estimate costs using this formula. It doesn't even matter which way they go. As long as you alternate left and right 90 degree turns, the distance stays the same. Math has many ways to measure how far things are from each other. And they're all useful in different scenarios. But in this video, we'll focus on how to find the length of this segment here. It's the shortest way to get from one point to another, so really important in practice. This is called the Euclidean distance and it's the length of the hypotenuse in this right triangle. Or this one, it doesn't really matter. We can find the length of the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem. I have a separate video on that with visual and analytical proofs and how to implement it in code. Check it out if you want to learn more. But basically, the theorem says the sum of these squares gives you the square of the hypotenuse. And if we know this square, we get its side length by taking the square root. This formula works for any two points. Here I'm rotating them along a fixed center. You can see those right triangles do change a lot, but the hypotenuse doesn't, so the distance is always 5, just as expected. Now let's address the hippo in the room. Why not just use a ruler? No need for all this fancy math. Well, hate to break it to you, but you actually do something more complicated. It's called dimensionality reduction. You see, in 2D, you can also spin the axes around and the distance doesn't change. But when you spin them just right, the Euclidean distance appears here. 
on one axis. No need for the other one. You just translate so one point is at the origin and read the value here. You're doing math, measuring angles, rotations and stuff. It's just a different way to get to the same results, and we humans find it really intuitive. Computers, on the other hand, well, I made a video where I implement this algorithm in JavaScript. Spoiler alert, computers like the Pythagorean theorem more. Let's go back before all this dimensionality reduction stuff and let's introduce the third dimension. Now, this is supposed to be perpendicular to both of these. I just can't draw it well on a flat screen. But you probably accept this anyway because it resembles things in the real world. So let's go on and move the points along this third axis. P is in front and Q in the back. They're opposite corners of a cuboid, and this is its thickness. It looks a little weird because of perspective, but they are the same length, really. Maybe it's clearer if we move P even closer. Maybe also look from a different angle. I don't know. I don't like this view, so we won't be using it much. I'll just quickly show that moving the points along this new dimension doesn't impact the others. These rectangles are supposed to be the same size, and we already know the length of this diagonal. We calculated it in two dimensions. Now, this inner rectangle is what we need to focus on. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to get the length of this other hypotenuse, the 3D Euclidean distance. It's the square root of this squared and this squared. Simplifying, it looks like that. Now, going to 4D like this would be a horrible mess. Especially since I think 3D is already confusing. So, let's go a step back and consider just the first two dimensions. Here we can calculate this length, but then also use the dimensionality reduction trick from earlier to clean things up. So, this new axis is special. It encodes the distance from two dimensions. I draw it differently so we remember that, and add the third dimension. This is clean now, and this angle is clearly 90 degrees. But here, this means perpendicular to both the other axes. Only then, moving along this third dimension doesn't affect what we already have. And the rectangle you see here is the one from inside the cuboid. We just look directly at it and ignore everything else, so to speak. And this is where we apply the Pythagorean theorem to find this length, which represents the 3D distance. And we continue like this. If our points are 4D, let's clean things up with dimensionality reduction. This now represents three dimensions. And this is now the fourth dimension. It's perpendicular to all others, somehow. There's nothing in our world we can relate to here. The points are now opposite corners in a so-called hypercube. Very hard to visualize as a whole, but here we just see the inner rectangle we need for the next calculation. We use the Pythagorean theorem again to get the 4D Euclidean distance. You maybe notice a pattern by now. If our points are 5D, we clean up, draw the fifth axis, apply the Pythagorean theorem, and go on like this until we have considered all dimensions, no matter how many, giving us this super long formula here. But luckily, mathematicians found a way to write it shorter, like this. It just means we add up for whole numbers of i between 1 and whatever the number of dimensions is. Now, before moving on to examples, I should point out this formula also works for the one-dimensional case because the square root of this squared is just a slightly more complicated way to get the absolute value. Now let's see examples where 3D is not enough. First one is from my self-driving car course. There, the car is equipped with sensors connected to a neural network making decisions. Let's ditch the neural network and keep just two sensors here. And now we drive. This is me controlling the car with the arrow keys. Now the information the sensors pick up is essentially a 2D point I'm gonna show here in an abstract space on the right. 
if I press right, I will mark that location with an arrow. I'll also mark it when I press left and use different colors to make it clearer. Now, as I drive, this becomes a history of what I did. And with this data, the machine can learn to drive itself. It just needs to find the nearest point from history and do what that point says. To find the nearest point, it calculates the distance to all the points and keeps the minimum. So distance calculation is essential here. And two sensors are usually not enough. Adding one more means we need to calculate distances in 3D. Adding one more means 4D and so on. Do you get the point? Let me know in the comments. Another example is from my machine learning course. There you guys made thousands of drawings for me and the goal is to teach the computer to recognize what is being drawn. The way it works so far is we extracted two features, the width and the height of the drawings. And our abstract feature space looks like this. Any new drawing can be represented as a point in this space. The recognizer just looks at the nearest item there, what it is, and says this must be the same. Or it looks at many things and decides based on the majority. Sometimes this is better. In any case, calculating distance is important here as well. Now, this works in grouping things together, but not great, because these two features are just not enough. Like, this pencil appears next to this car, because it's drawn at an angle, making the bounding box look like that. Adding a third feature, the elongation, will fix this problem. Elongated shapes will move away in the third dimension, making pencils really easy to classify. Then, these clocks and houses are quite mixed as well. They tend to have the same width, height and elongation, so we'll need a new feature, the roundness. This will help separate clocks from other things in the fourth dimension. And so on, adding as many features as necessary. I hope it's clear why more dimensions are needed. And if not, ask in the comments. Now let's learn to code the Euclidean distance function between two points. I like to consider these points as arrays or vectors, lists, depending on the programming language terminology. And first thing we do is check to see if they have the same number of dimensions. And if they don't, then we signal an error like this. Now here, everything is good. So we begin to calculate this squared distance here. I initialize it with zero, and then we loop through all of the dimensions, and we can use P1 for that. And at each step, we add the difference on each dimension squared. And at the end, we can just return the square root of this value. I write the square root here as just raising it to the power of one half, so I'm not using libraries. And speaking of which, look out for those, because there are many libraries that have this function already implemented, so you don't need to do it yourself. Hope you liked this video, and see you guys.